Hey guys, welcome to part three of the mean stack front to back series. In the last video, we went ahead and set up our Express server and we connected to our MongoDB database. Uh, we also set up all the middleware for our dependencies, for our cores and body parser, things like that. And we also created our routes file. So in routes users, we have our register authenticate profile and validate now one thing that I forgot to do is register is actually a post route so we just want to change that to router dot post okay and we don't even need the validate I had that for some testing I was doing so we're gonna get rid of that as well alright um, that's the only thing that we need to change from what we've already done I believe we also set up our database config file um, so now what we want to do is we want to create our model for our users okay because we're gonna have a model that's gonna hold all the fields and field and um, types of fields which will be name password email and username we're also gonna have our functions that interact with the database in that file so let's go ahead and create a folder okay so we're gonna create a folder called models and we're gonna create a file in there called user.js Okay, so in here we want to bring in mongoose. So we're going to set that to require mongoose. And we also want to bring in um, bcrypt for encryption. And we want to set that to require. And we're going to require bcrypt.js because that's what we're using. And let's also bring in the config file. So say cons config. Okay, and we're gonna go dot dot slash models slash database. Okay, so those are our includes. Uh, now what we want to do is create a schema. So this is gonna be a user schema. So we'll create a variable called user schema and set that to mongoose.schema. Okay, that's gonna take in some curly braces, and then we define our attributes. Okay, so we want a name, oh, name, and that's gonna have type string. Next we'll have a, let's see, email, Type will be string. I actually want to set, well, name doesn't have to be required, but email does. So let's say required, and we'll set that to true. Okay, then we have username, also a string, and we'll also set that to true. Okay, then password. Same thing. Okay, so that, that's our schema. Those are the attributes we want. Now we can always add more later, so don't worry about that. Uh, and then underneath that, we want to create a variable called user, uppercase U. And we want to make it so that we can use this from outside. So we need to do module exports. And then we're going to set it to mongoose.model which will take in the name of the model user and then the schema so user schema Oop. all right now I want to create two basic um, functions in this file one to get the user by it by their ID and one to get it by the username so when we want to use functions outside, we have to do module.exports and then dot the function name. So let's say get user by ID. Actually, we want to set that equal to function. And that's going to take in the ID and callback. And then down here, we're just going to say user uh, user dot We'll use the mongoose function find by ID. 
and then that's going to take an ID and call back. Okay, so now we can call this from outside. We're also going to do by username. Okay, that's going to take in username. And then we have to create a query for this because we're going to use the find one function, which takes a query. So let's do const query. It's going to be an object. We'll say username by username that's being passed in here. Okay, and then we'll just change this to find one and change this to query. Okay, and that should do it. So let's save that. So now we want to do, <coughs> excuse me, we want to do our register. So we're going to go to routes users and then to our post register. Again, make sure this is post, not get. And actually, let's bring in a couple things first. So uh, we're going to bring in our model. So user. dot dot slash models slash user and that's actually all we need right now but I might as well bring in the other stuff that we need so we'll bring in passport and we're also going to need the JSON web token module so we'll say const we'll call this JWT and set that to JSON web token okay and then down here in the register we're going to create uh, a new user so let's say const actually let's use let for this so let new user equals and then we're going to instantiate a user object from our model so new user and then we're going to pass in an object with a name and then we're going to get Whatever is submitted in the form, we can get with request.body.name, email, username, and password. All right, and this is a plain text password. We're going to run it through a function called um, bcrypt.hash that'll hash it before it goes into the database. So we have this user, this new user object, and now what we want to do with it is call a function called add user, which we'll put in our model as well. So let's do user dot add user. Okay, and then we're going to pass in here that new user object, and then a callback. Okay, and this callback is going to have an error if there is one, and then user. Okay, and then we're going to do our response. So we'll say if there is an error, then let's just do respond.json. We're going to send some JSON content, and it's going to have a success value, which is going to be false because the user isn't registered, and then a message, and the message will just say. Um, failed to register user okay and then else so if everything goes okay we're gonna again res.json except we're gonna say success is true and our message will say user registered okay so let's save that and now let's create the add user inside of the model user is a function okay and that's going to take in that new user object and then our callback uh, callback okay because we, we did the actual callback in the route and then in here uh, let's see what we're going to do here we're going to go ahead and um, hash the password. Now we need to call a function called bcrypt.gensalt. So we're going to generate a salt, which is basically like a random key that's used to hash the, the password. 
Um, we'll say it's going to be 10, um, 10, what the hell is it called? Let me just look this up real quick. So bcrypt.js, you may want to look at the documentation anyways. And let's see, we need to do gen salt. We're passing in 10, which is rounds, 10 rounds. And the default is 10 as well. So we want to do that, and then we want to have our callback, which will have the error and salt. And then we can call the hash function, pass in the salt, and it'll give us back our hash password. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So we'll put an arrow function here. And that's going to be error and salt. And then we want to do the hash, so bcrypt.hash. Going to take in the password, so new user dot new user dot password, and then the salt, and then the callback. Okay, and that callback will give us an error if there is one, and then the hash. So now what we want to do is take the password that's in the new user object, which is whatever they submit in the form, and then uh, make that into the hash. So we can do that with new user dot password equals hash. Okay, and then we can go on to save it. So new user dot save and just pass in that callback right there. Okay, uh, actually, let's we didn't check for the error. So we'll say if error throw error. All right. So we should now be able to register and also get our passwords encrypted. So let's test it out. Now I'm using Postman to do this. If you want, just um, let's see, Postman Chrome. And I'm using the Chrome extension, so you can go ahead and download it. It says launch app for me because I have it already installed. But you can use anything that makes HTTP requests. You could just use curl if you want. Rest easy is another good utility. Uh, but we're just going to use Postman. So let's make a post request to HTTP localhost 3000 slash users slash register. And then we want to add for the headers, we're going to add the content type. I'm going to submit it as JSON, so application dot, uh, slash JSON. And then the body, I'm going to send raw. And let's do, uh, actually, let's do name John Doe, email, and username. And I'll just say John and password. Okay, so we're submitting a plain text password, but it's gonna encrypt it for us. So let's go ahead and try that. Could not get any response. Let's see what this says. Uh, required true. Unexpected identifier. Oh, let me put a comma here. And cannot find module models database. Oh, that's wrong. That's config database. Sorry about that, guys. Hopefully that's it. Let's go ahead and try the register again. Send true user registered. Good. So now if we go down here to the Mongo shell and say show DBs, we have a mean auth database. So I'm going to say use mean auth. And let's say show collections. So we have a user's collection. And look, we didn't have to even set up this database. We didn't have to create that collection. Uh, this is a lot more flexible than something like MySQL, where you would have to go in, create your tables. You'd have to create every single column you want along with each field type. This is much more flexible. So we can say db.users.find, and then let's add .pretty, which will make it look a little cleaner. And there's our guy. So we have our ID, which is an object ID, kind of like a primary key in a relational database. Our name, email, username, and look at the password. 
the password is now encrypted. Okay, so we're not storing those plain text passwords. All right, so we now have a registration system. So I'm going to cut it here, and then in the next video, we're going to set up a passport with a local strat, not a local strategy, a JWT strategy, so that we can uh, authenticate and get a token back. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.